Welcome friends. Today we're going to get back to basics in Business Central and we're going to talk about role centers. I'm Simeon Wood, a senior consultant here at Stone Ridge Software and a Microsoft certified trainer. So what is a role center? What you're looking at here on the screen, this is the home screen of the sales order processor role center. You can see different queue tiles here that are relevant to the sales order processor role center. I can also see some, some things on here that are not important for me in my organization. So how do I typically get rid of things on the role center? Typically, I go in and personalize. Notice I already have a lot of things hidden here. I'm going to take out a few more. Then I'm going to press done. So what did I just do? I just personalized my role center. What does that mean? That means I've changed the look and feel of my role center just for me though, not for anybody else. If I go into sales orders and I dig into an order, I can do the same thing. I can go in and I can personalize, move fields around, take things, take fields away that people don't need to see, move things around, anything I need to do to make my job easier for me. Remember, I'm just personalizing right now. But in Business Central, you can do this for a role itself. How do we do that? Let's go look at it, the roles. Notice on the roles, I can see a way bigger list than if I look at the My Settings. Notice in here I have a handful. But here it seems like there's a lot more. Why is that? It's because I can only see the ones that are enabled. So you can go through and enable different ones and pick the ones that you like to see, the ones that you want to use. I like to advise my clients to go through and enable a bunch of these different roles that sound familiar, like different parts of your business, and then take a look at them. And first and foremost, decide which ones you want to use for your organization. Now, once I've decided which ones I want to use, I want to go through and I want to customize them specific for my business. Here's an example. If I go down to the sales order processor and I hit customize, what you're going to first notice is that it looks a lot like that personalizing option, except it's not personalizing. I'm customizing, meaning anything I change on the screen here is going to be seen by anyone that is assigned to the sales order processor role center. Very powerful. So imagine that this whole tile here is not important for my organization. I can just hide it. Now none of my sales order processors will see it anymore. What if I want to go through and I want to look at my sales orders and I want to make sure I get all the fields in the exact order that the sales order processors process in. Maybe they don't need to see the unit of measure. It's not important for them. Maybe they want to put the unit price before the quantity. Now my sales order processors can simply tab right through an order with maximum efficiency. This is what I like to see clients doing. Going through and customizing and getting each role set up exactly what they want. So where do you start? Well, you start by going through, of course, and enabling these and picking the ones you want to use. I advise clients to use between about four to eight different role centers maybe. If you're using more than eight, it's probably too much unless you're a very complicated organization. And if you're using less than four, you should probably have a few more unless maybe you're a small organization or you just want to use one for everybody. That's okay too. It's just not typical. So now that you've gone through, you've decided which roles you want to use, you've customized them to match your organization. Next, you would go into the user settings page and assign them to your users. Notice here in my demo environment, I have a whole lot of them set up for my users, but we're just testing. Again, stick to the four to eight rule, try to stick to it, unless you have a good reason not to. But notice that you can gain maximum efficiency by ma managing and organizing your role centers. 
Just starting with that, notice that we've not done any pro custom programming. We've not interfaced with any consultants or done anything. I'm just taking the tools in Business Central that I already own and I'm maximizing the efficiency of my organization through Wool Centers. There's a lot of more advanced things you can do. You can go through and say, hey, I like the sales quotes open queue, but I like it on a different role center. We can do that for you at Stone Ridge. We can customize and develop and add custom programming to make whatever you want show up anywhere you want. It's possible. But I know from experience that there is so much you can do here on your own. And it's a great place to start. I would love to see organizations get all of their users in the proper roles, get everything set up and configured to make them as efficient as they can be. Oftentimes I'll work with clients and I'll have them define one person in their organization as the owner of the role centers. Or maybe they have one person in each different role that's the owner of the role centers. Either way, if you define somebody and give them the task of cleaning up these role centers and getting them set up the way you want, you'll gain efficiency immediately without doing anything else except taking things off of the screen that people don't need to see and adding tasks and items that they do need to see. Imagine what it'll do for your onboarding experience. It'll make it so much easier when a new employee starts and they see just what they need on the screen. That's all they have to see and all they have to do. It'll make your business more efficient and give you the tools you need to succeed. Please reach out to Stone Ridge if you need any help with this. We're gonna talk more about this as we go through the series, but this is enough to get you started and get you dangerous. Please go ahead and start customizing your roles. So now that I've had a chance to go in and review the different role centers and pick the roles I wanna use, I made a handy little cheat sheet here to pick which role center will go with each one of my users. I've gone into user settings and I have everyone defined. So let's take a look at a few more options that are available. We go back to the profiles. Let's look at our order processor role. So if we look at our order processor role, that's the role that I'm in right now. Notice here that I've disabled personalization. What that means is that users that are assigned to this role will no longer be able to personalize. This is a great feature once you have your role customized to be exactly what you want. Notice here, there is no personalized option anymore. It's completely gone. I'm gonna put myself in a different role. Let's go back and let's say service manager. Notice here, the service manager still can go in and personalize. This is the next thing I wanna talk about. So imagine that a user has gone in and they still have the ability to personalize. And they've gone in and they've changed things around, and added fields, and probably done a little bit too much. The customization that you've done is what they really need. So what they could do, imagine they've gone in here and onto the customer list and they've done some changes, move things around. They want to change, they want to flash it back to how it was. You can go in here, press personalize and clear personalization. If a user does this, what this will do is it'll set the personalization back to the way that you have it customized. So no harm, it'll just bring it back to the way that, that it's customized. Now let's go into the profile. If I look at the order processor profile, I can see here I can do the same thing on the profile. Clear customized pages. That's dangerous. If you press this, it's going to bounce every single change you've made in your profile back to the Microsoft standard. So you don't really want to do that. But you could go in here and go to customers. And bounce this back. So you could, you could go in, go into the profile, go into customize. 
go back to your customers and clear the customization just for this page. And that sets it back to basic and you can start again. Let's look at a few other tips. If I go back into the role here, let's take a look. We're on our customer list. Say I want to add some fields to it. Personalize. I want to personalize this as a user. So notice here, there's a, a limited list of fields that you can see. Limited because I know that there's a lot more. Let's go back in and go to the profile itself. If I go and I customize the order processor role, you're going to see something interesting here. If I go in here and we're customers. So I go to my customer list and say I want to add a field. Wow, look, there's a lot more fields. So there are fields that are hidden from the users from personalizing. But in customize, you have access to all fields available for the table on this page or any page in the system. That's a new feature in Business Central. So the way I tell people to, to look at that is let's let's see. Let's go back to the customer page real quick. So we're on the customer page. If you go in here and you go to help, inspect pages and data. And I can see all the fields here. This is where you start. If you see fields in here or users see fields in here that they would like to have on the screen that they can't see, it's because they need to be added through customize. So keep that in mind as you're going through. Now, one of the next handy features for some organizations under profiles, and this is a little more advanced. But notice if I go here to profiles, you can see this export and import function on here. What this is, this allows you to export the profile out with all the customizations you've made to it and then import it into a different system. So imagine that you exported out all your profiles and all you do is you literally go like this. They come out into a zip file. You could then import them into a sandbox environment, make changes there, export them out and bring them back into your production database. The reason you'd want to do that and the way I've seen customers use that is imagine you have a really large organization and you are very organized and you're collecting all the changes that need to be made to the role, but you're only rolling them out once a month. You can make the changes behind the scenes in a sandbox, export them out and then bring them in to the production database. That's not really normal. It's more bigger companies that do that typically, but small companies can benefit from it too. So just keep it in mind. Now let's take a look at a couple of roles that I've customized. So I made one here called counter. So this is our sales order processor counter sales. What this role is, is it's a copy of the sales order processor role and I just ripped every single thing out of it and made it look very plain. Notice I also can't personalize because I have it set up exactly the way I want. This is for counter sales, meaning it's an open computer or tablet or phone. And all you can really do is go in, you can make sales orders, you can see customers and you can see items. And you can see a very limited view when you drill into the order itself. So this is meant for users that don't need access to every single thing. They have a job to do. This person's selling equipment at a sales counter. People are walking in, buying stuff, picking it up, and they need to be in and out. Let's take a look at another one. So I did the same kind of thing and I made one called shop floor data collection. I made a copy of the role from the manufacturing role Let's take a look. This is one that I would want specifically to work on a tablet on the end of a manufacturing line. Let's go back and look at the home. So notice here, 
I can see I can only get to release production orders. And all I could really do with them safely is go into the production journal and post production at the end of the day. This is the real power with the role centers because you can make them extremely clean with very limited options, just what the people need to do their job and not be bothered by all of the different noise that sometimes is in these role centers. So now let's take, let's take a look at the permissions. That's what we're gonna talk about next. That's the next part of this webinar series. Let's go back to a more a role with some more options in it. Let's look at the sales and relationship manager role. Now I want people to notice while they're doing this, that any role that you're in, you can go up and search. So I can search for bank from here and I can get into the bank accounts. This is role agnostic. It does not matter which role I'm in. It's based on my security. What does that mean? So if I go in and look at users, and I look at any one of these users, let's take a look at Alan. So here are your permissions. This is the user card. Alan has what's called super permissions here. Super permissions means all permissions. So it does not matter what role he's in, he can go in and do things like this. Search for bank accounts. Search for the chart of accounts. Search for the balance sheet. So it's an important concept because people sometimes think that based on the role they're in, those are the permissions they have. And that's not how permissions work. Permissions are based on the user as are roles. User settings are where the role gets assigned. The user card is where the permissions get assigned. And permissions are a little bit bigger, but not, not extremely complicated. And that's what we're going to talk about next year in this web series. Thanks, everybody, for listening to a lot about roles.